Hi, I'm Kayleigh, the Communications and Engagement Officer for Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. And if you hadn't already guessed, today we're going to be taking a closer look at the red squirrel. Now, in the UK, there are two species of squirrel that you might see. There's the red squirrel and the grey squirrel. Um, but there's only one native squirrel species to Britain, and that is the red squirrel. Now, red squirrels used to be widespread throughout Britain before the introduction of the American grey squirrel in the Victorian times. So we believe they were first introduced um, to decorate the gardens of large stately homes, but unfortunately they soon expanded their range and they replaced red squirrels throughout most of England, Wales and also parts of Scotland too. 75% of the UK's red squirrels can be found in Scotland. So in terms of numbers, that's around 120,000 red squirrels here in Scotland. So where can we find red squirrels today? Well, the good news is that there are so many places that you could encounter a red squirrel. The Caledonian pine forests of the Scottish Highland is home to a very healthy population of red squirrels, but they can also be found throughout central and southern Scotland too. The conifer forests of Galloway, the Atlantic hazel woodlands of Argyll, the Tweed Valley in the borders, and the country estates of Tayside are just a few examples of where you might see a red squirrel. Even here in busy Aberdeen, we've seen that red squirrels are coming closer and closer back to the city centre. So a great habitat for red squirrels is one with a healthy food supply. So a varied mix of cone, fruit, seed and nut producing trees ensures that squirrels have plenty of natural food resources to see them throughout the whole year. In this video, some of the team at Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels are going to be taking a closer look at the identifying features of a red squirrel um, taking a look at their behaviour, um, also sharing some facts and some useful ways that you can help protect your local red squirrels. So we want to ensure that red squirrels remain part of Scottish wildlife, so we'd love to share with you what makes them so unique and iconic. I'm now going to pass you over to Marianne, our Conservation Officer for Argyle, the Trossachs and Stirling. So I'm going to be talking to you about the different features that squirrels have to make them the fantastic creatures that they are. So what do you think about when you think of squirrels? You probably think of them being quite athletic, all nice and fluffy, with a big bushy tail as well. That tail's a really distinctive feature that makes squirrels squirrels, really. Um, so let's focus on that to begin with. So there's many uses for their tails. One of the main ones is balance for up in the treetops as they're running around all over the place and jumping from tree to tree. It really helps them to kind of keep their balance and not fall off. They can also use it as a blanket in the winter because it's so nice and fluffy. They can communicate with it by waving it back and forth. They often do that if they're a bit annoyed at us and we're in their way. And they can also use it as a bit of an umbrella as you'll see on the picture there, especially if it's raining or um, snowy, but sometimes for a bit of shade too. So running up and down in the treetops, they need some other things to help them do this too. And one of the things that really helps them is their claws, really sharp, strong claws and that's to get them to grip onto the bark really tightly so that they don't fall off again. They also can rotate their feet 180 degrees so they can quickly um, change direction when they're running up and down all over the place and if they've quickly grabbed onto something but they haven't quite got it right. So their claws are really useful. They can also hang onto branches really tightly and that will help them to get onto the very end where there's a tasty treat at the bottom and they do help um, balance with their tail a little bit with that too. Their claws are also really good for eating, so holding a nut in their hand as they're trying to get into it. So we think of squirrels and we also think of them eating nuts and seeds as well and they really have to grip onto those to kind of get to the tasty treat inside. They can eat hazelnuts and all sorts of other nuts where they have to crack the really hard shell that we can't even squeeze open. But they also eat pine cones as well. Not the actual pine cone themselves, but there's some seeds in it. So you can actually have a look for this when you're wandering around in the woodlands. So we've got a full cone on 
the side here and they pull all these little bits off so they can get to the seed inside so if you happen to see some that look a bit scraggly and they've had all these bits taken off and they're all littered around everywhere there's a squirrel that's been chewing that to pieces turning it around in its um, claws trying to get to all those little nuts inside so that's something you can look at when you're out for a walk so squirrels don't only eat nuts they're only around in the autumn time unless we give them to them so naturally they're only in the autumn and it means they have to eat lots of other things too. They're actually quite good at having a varied diet. They eat mushrooms. Quite often they'll pick them and they'll hang them on branches of the trees to dry out so they can store them for a little bit longer. They'll also eat flowers and fruits, uh, new growth on trees and plants in the springtime. They tend to be vegetarian, but occasionally they do eat birds, eggs and insects if they happen to come across them. Another really good thing they do is that they can store food for overwinter. So another good um, use of their claws is to dig into ground so they can hide the nuts and seeds under there. So they've got a food store for during the winter time. And sometimes they forget about them, so they'll occasionally grow into new trees too, which is pretty cool. So we have two types of squirrels in the UK, as mentioned earlier. So let's have a look at how we can tell them apart. So we've got red squirrels and grey squirrels. The red squirrel as its name suggests, is red. We can have a look at the fur colour for the differences, and the grey squirrel is grey. Although they're not always like this. It can be a bit tricky to tell them apart, and that's partly because they just have slightly different hair colour. So if you think of a room of people, um, a big group of people, not everyone in there is going to have the same colour hair. There's going to be lots of different varieties of hair colour. And that's what happens with the squirrels too. So with red squirrels, they can um, be red or orangey, a bit like iron brew called iron brew squirrels and um, they can also be quite brown they can also be quite blonde as well and sometimes they just have a blonde or a brown tail a bit like the one over there in the picture so we do have to be a little bit careful grey squirrels whilst they tend to be grey they can also have um, some shades of ginger or red on them so if you're quickly getting a glimpse of them through the treetops it can be hard to tell which squirrel you're seeing because they both have the white on that front as well one thing you can look out for is their tails so the red squirrel tends to have the same colour on all of its tail, whether that's a blonde one, or a red one, or a darker one. Whereas a grey squirrel has a grey tail, but it also has a really cool thing around the edge. And that's a halo. So you can just see the little white hairs on the edge there. I'll just show you in a bit more detail. So with this, as you can see, this is a grey squirrel tail, you can see all the white around the edge, and we call that a tail halo. And that helps us to know if it's a red or a grey squirrel that we've just seen the tail of. Hair colour can also be tricky because there's a couple of conditions that both species can show, which affects their colour in general. So there's some conditions that mean that they can be completely white or completely black. So I'm just going to go through into a little bit more detail about that. So there's um, albino squirrels, they're completely white and you can tell them from other um, conditions because they'll have red pinkish eyes and they're completely white all over because they're losing a pigment that makes up the colour called melanin. They don't have any of it at all and both species can be all of these. There's leucistic squirrels which again are white, they don't have to be completely white but you can tell the difference between them and albinos because they don't have pink or red eyes, they have normal coloured eyes and sometimes they won't have um, white everywhere, sometimes they'll just have patches of white that are missing that pigment, melanin. And then you have melanistic squirrels, which are completely black because they've got too much of that pigment. And both reds and greys can be that, so we can't rely on colour alone, which is a bit tricky. So let's look at another thing that we can um, bear in mind when we're trying to figure out which type it is. So we can look at their size. So the red's half the size of the grey, and that's something that we can have a look for. Unfortunately though, sometimes with the young grey squirrels, they can be the similar size to reds until they're fully adult, so again we have to be quite careful. Another distinctive feature that we can look at is ear tufts. So squirrels have kind of mouse type round ears, but actually red squirrels have a little tuft on the end of theirs too. Again, it can be quite tricky to see, but it's one thing that we can look at. I'm now going to hand you over to Emma from Aberdeen to talk about what squirrels get up to um, during the year. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm Conservation Officer with Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels in the northeast of Scotland. Squirrels live in drays. Um, they build them usually over six metres high, close to the actual trunk of the tree in a fork. And they also sometimes use natural cavities that are in older trees. 
So the drays themselves are made from twigs, dry grass, leaves, moss, bark, anything that'll make it nice and cozy. Um, squirrels actually use multiple drays at a time. So they'll have daytime drays where they'll rest during the day and nighttime drays where they'll sleep at night. One study found that one individual squirrel actually used eight different drays in a two week period. So red squirrels do not hibernate. So there are actually more than 200 species of squirrels around the world. We've got ground squirrels, flying squirrels and tree squirrels. Our red squirrel is a tree squirrel. It doesn't hibernate. Um, hibernation is actually more common in ground squirrels. Red squirrels breed in spring and summer. Pregnancy lasts between five and six weeks and the female will give birth to between one and six young. The average number of kittens in the litter is three. So they're born at around 10 to 15 grams each, totally hairless, blind and deaf. After about three weeks, they'll be covered in hair and at four weeks, their eyes and their ears will start to open. By the time they're seven weeks old, they'll start leaving the nest for the first time. And by the time they're eight weeks old, they should actually be fully weaned. Some squirrels will go on to breed themselves within their first year. On average, a squirrel lives just three years in the wild. So they don't have very long lives, but they sure do pack in a lot of fun. Sadly, red squirrels are still under threat in Scotland because they're outcompeted by their non-native gray cousin. Grey squirrels also carry the squirrel pox disease, which is harmless to them, but deadly when it's passed on to the reds. It's not all doom and gloom though. There's lots being done and lots yet to be done to protect red squirrels for the future. To monitor red and grey squirrel distributions, the Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels project is running a long-term squirrel monitoring survey right across Scotland. We've got key areas dotted around with squirrel feeder boxes and every spring they're baited with a sticky tab so that when the squirrel goes in it will leave a small sample of hair and then we look at all these samples under the microscope and the result is a landscape scale view of the red and grey squirrel distributions, crucially where they overlap and how they've changed over time. There are lots of other ways to take action for your local red squirrels from doing survey work, to grey squirrel control, to spreading awareness by volunteering at an event. In southern Scotland we've got 17 volunteer-led networks all carrying out red squirrel conservation on the ground. Have a look on our website to learn more about the fantastic work each group is doing and the many ways you can join them. Together we can protect the future of the red squirrel in Scotland.